Uh, okay, so whose eye do you think that is? Yeah. So it's my book. I'm going to put my eye in my book. Right. So it's actually kind of hard to get a photo of your eye that close up. You know, it's sharp at all. What's that? You can tell it's mine, right? It's all bloodshot, right? So it's authentic. Uh, okay, so biometrics, this is the something you are form of authentication. Now, um, this, I love this quote, Bruce Schneier, he's got a quote for everything. This one's especially good. You are your key. So you don't have to remember your key, you don't have to take it with you, you just show up and some physical characteristic that comes along with you is acting as your key. So that's good. Uh, you know, there's lots of different biometrics, <coughs> the classic one of the fingerprint, okay, that's one we'll talk about a little bit, but even things you know, sort of a handwritten signature could be thought of as a weak form of a biometric, right? It's supposed to be something that only you can do, and you know, whether other people can really verify that or not, you know, that's questionable, whether anybody can forge it, you know, that's all questionable. But in principle, it's a kind of biometric, maybe not very good. Uh, facial recognition, this is really popular. Why are, why are people so interested in facial recognition right now? I, mean, I see articles in the Mercury News once in a while about companies that claim to have come up with better facial recognition schemes. Yeah. Firebase has a facial recognition. All you need is a. All the, the only hardware you need is a camera. Yeah. Okay. So actually, they are used on computers, right? So as a form of authentication. So where else do you see this stuff come up? Facial recognition. Airports. <laughs> airports. Okay. They're interested in like spotting the terrorist in the airport. There's another place where it's used and actually has been used for a long time. Casinos in Las Vegas, okay? So they have those cameras when you come in, what are they doing? They're taking a picture of people and they're comparing it to a database of pictures of terrorists. They want to keep the terrorists out? Well, they don't care. If terrorists have money, they're welcome to come in and gamble, right? No, they want to keep the cheaters out. So it's known cheaters, right? They're trying to capture and this has actually been going on for a long time. I mean, I heard a talk on this like in the early 90s, and they were actually installing systems at that time. So whether it really works is another question, but you know, at least the deterrent value, you know, maybe something you know, doesn't work. Uh, speech recognition, that's kind of an interesting area. Uh, I worked in speech quite a bit when I was at NSA, and you know, if you look at speech sonograms of speech, uh, you, if you do it the right way, I mean, it looks to all the world like a, a, essentially a fingerprint of the voice, right? And so it's really tempting to try and use that. Um, unfortunately, it's really difficult. Um, it's even hard to automatically determine the language that's being spoken, <laughs> let alone the individual speaker. So it's, you know, it's, it's tempting, but it's kind of hard to do in practice. And there's lots of weird ones out there. People come up with these wacky uh, things all the time. Gait recognition, you know, how you walk. And my favorite, the digital dog meat and how you smell, okay? Okay, so why biometrics? Why are people interested in biometrics? Okay, that should be obvious, right? Passwords are bad, okay? Anything that's more secure than passwords, people are certainly going to be interested in. Okay, but the issue is, passwords, how much do those things cost? They're free, okay? So if you're going to get a biometric, it's going to compete with passwords. It better be reasonably strong, and it also better be cheap, okay? It's got to be cheap. Now, it's not going to be free. Okay? You've got to have some hardware, something along with it, but, you know, it better be pretty cheap. Uh, okay, so it's certainly a very active area of research, and these things are used, okay? You can get the laptop, right, that takes your thumbprint. Um, you can buy a mouse, just a mouse, and install it on any computer. It takes your thumbprint, use that as a form of authentication. Uh, fingerprints, right, for uh, door locks on cars and stuff like that. You know, those things are around. Uh, palm print, so some companies use this as a way for secure entry, right? You put your palm down and then it reads your palm and says how long you're going to live and how much money you're going to make. <laughs> He's not going to make enough money, don't let him in. <laughs> no, so it's taking sort of physical characteristics of your hand, the shape of your hand. And those are actually really popular. We'll look at that very briefly uh, and so on. But, but I, for me, sort of the bottom line here is that these biometrics, you know, and passwords are so bad, and biometrics just seem like a, a natural thing to use, very sensible thing to use. It's 
surprising it's not used more. It really should be used a lot more. So, you know, is it going to catch on? Things are going to take off? I don't know. I thought so when I wrote the first edition. That's five years ago. <laughs> now I'm not quite so sure. <coughs> okay, so what do we want from a biometric? You know, these four things. We would like it ideally to be universal, distinguishing, permanent, and collectible. Okay, universal in the sense that we, it applies to everybody. And it's, it's an investment, right, to install this, uh, you know, biometric system, so we want it to work for everybody. If it doesn't work for somebody, what are we going to do with that person? How are we going to authenticate that person? Password. Password. There you go. you got to fall back on something, so probably passwords or something, you know, that's worse. So you want it to apply to everybody. Now, in practice, nothing applies to everybody. Okay? Even something like a fingerprint. There's a lot of people, or, you know, there's a, some people out there who, who don't have measurable fingerprints. So, you know, even that wouldn't work for everybody. So most people that can get a high percent will be good. Uh, distinguishing, okay, ideally, it'd be 100% certain. Okay, this is Alice or this is not Alice. Nothing's that accurate. You know, even fingerprints. You can get fingerprints and take a lot of, you know, information from the fingerprint, get it down to a one in a billion chance of an error, but you can't get it down to zero. <laughs> okay, so there's still gonna be a chance. Uh, permanent. Uh, you know, you don't want to have to remeasure it constantly, right, and change your uh, data uh, constantly. Um, you know, so nothing's really permanent, but if it lasts a long time, that's okay. If it lasts five years, my laptop's going to be in the trash then, so I don't care anymore after that. Yeah. Um, one of the, I think last time, our last lecture, we talked about one of the advantages of passwords is that it can be changed. Yeah. So if you're using permanent biometric, what happens if that gets compromised? Yeah, it's a good question. Okay, we'll, we'll actually, <laughs> we'll actually mention, mention that. Get a new thumb, you know, that's, that's the big deal. Yeah, so that, that's an issue. Okay, definitely a good point. Uh, permanent here means really in the sense that, you know, it, suppose you're using a thumbprint, you know, to authenticate. You have to put that information into the system, right? So you don't want to have to do that again. You just want to do it once and then use it from then on, okay? Uh, and collectible, okay, you want it to be easy to collect so people are sort of willing to do it and willing to use it. It's convenient, that sort of stuff. I mean, think about this. Suppose you're going to your company. You go work at your company. They use a palm print system. That's pretty easy. I'm willing to put my palm there. It takes a couple seconds to measure. You're in on the other hand, they could get a retina scan, right? So they got to shine a light way in the back of your eye, measure those blood vessels in the back of your eye. Are you really going to want to do that every day when you go to work? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You might be concerned about that. So. Uh, okay. There's two different ways that we can think about using a biometric. Okay, we can use it for identification. So this is like spot the cheater at the casino, right? People walk in, we take a snapshot of everybody who walks in, we have a database of cheaters we want to keep out, we compare and see if there's a match, all right? So that's identification. For the most part, we're interested in the issue of authentication, okay? So I come up to the computer and I say, hey, I'm Alice, here's my thumbprint. Does it match Alice's thumbprint, okay? So, and maybe for this first one, maybe a better example to think about is FBI database. So police show up at a crime scene, they get a fingerprint, they don't have anything else to go on, what do they do? Send it off to the FBI database in Washington where my fingerprints are there because everybody who ever worked for the government has their fingerprints there, so, uh, for the federal government at least. So, um, so they compare it. And there's millions of fingerprints there, right? And they just run a comparison and see if they come up with any matches. Right. On the other hand, this authentication thing, if I come up and I say, I'm Alice, how many comparisons do I need to do? One. It just takes Alice's information and says, does this match with Alice or does it not? Okay, so which of these problems is easier, authentication or identification? Authentication. Why? Because you're doing one comparison, why does that make it easier? We still have to get it right, don't we? Okay, you're right. I mean, intuitively, it's easier, but why is it easier? 
okay, the reason it's easier is because every time you do a comparison, you have a chance of making an error. If you're doing millions of comparisons, you get millions of chances to make errors. If you're doing one comparison, you'll have one chance to make an error. Okay, so all else being equal, this is way, way harder. Think about it. I mean, if you had a, a fingerprint detection scheme that only had a one in a billion chance of making an error, okay? You have a million fingerprints in this FBI database. It's probably a lot more than that, but suppose it's a million. You have a million fingerprints. You do a thousand different crime scenes, you've done a billion comparisons, you're going to make an error. On the other hand, if I have a one in a billion chance and I come up and I authenticate, it's try to be Alice, you know, try to be myself, and so on, I'm never going to get a billion comparisons. <laughs> never. Okay, not even close. Okay, so this is just inherently a much harder problem. So you should be skeptical when you hear, you know, about <coughs> facial recognition in the airport or even in the casino or anywhere else. You know, it's just inherently a hard problem. Okay. Uh, again, the random matches, just the more compare. It's all about comparisons, isn't it? The more comparisons you do, the more uh, problems you have. Here. Okay, this is good in a sense because we're primarily interested in this case, authentication. Okay, so we have the easier case here. That's good. Easy is good. We like it. Uh, okay, so now think about the uh, uh, authentication problem. Okay, so I buy this new fancy computer that has a you know thumbprint scanner and all that. Well, first thing I have to do is enter my information, right? So I have to say, hey, I'm Mark Stamp. Here's my thumbprint. Okay, we'll call that part where we're getting the data into the system. We'll call that the enrollment phase. Okay, we're enrolling people into the system. Okay, once that's done, then I come up and I want to actually use the computer. I want to authenticate. Okay, so I put my thumb down. I say, I'm Mark Stamp. I want to get access. So that's the recognition phase. Now, the enrollment, how often do we have to do this? Hopefully just once. Okay, so it's okay if that takes a little while. You know, we want it to be really accurate. We can never do any better than the information we get into that database. So we, it's okay if we have to put our thumb down several times, you know, and get it in there precisely. That's okay, because it's one-time work. On the other hand, this recognition part, this better be pretty quick, right? Because I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes putting my thumb down every time I want to log in, or I'm going to smash this computer. <laughs> you just won't use it. Okay, so, you know, quick, simple, good enough, okay, what you're looking for here. Here, this has to be really accurate. And in fact, um, I heard a talk by a, a guy from, uh, teaches at some university in New Zealand. For one of his students' projects, I think just a master's student project, they went and bought some top-of-the-line biometric system, you know, a retinas, uh, iris scan system. And they did these experiments, you know, just to see how good it was. It's supposed to be really, really accurate, right? And what they found is they just could not get the accuracy that was advertised. And their conclusion was that, that this enrollment phase, to really get that high accuracy, had to be almost laboratory-like conditions. If you tried to do it in the real world, you wouldn't get that level of accuracy. And as I tell my students, don't plan on doing a project like that at San Jose State for your master's project, because it actually costs money to buy that thing. And nobody here is going to buy that for you. Okay. Uh, okay, so another thing you can think about is the subject, okay? The person who you're extracting, trying to get this information from. Are they going to cooperate or are they not? Now, if you're trying to get access to your computer, you're probably going to cooperate. You're going to put your thumb in the right spot, get it measured. If you're trying to get into your place of work, you're going to put your hand where it goes on the palm print thing because you want to get paid, right? On the other hand, if you're the cheater trying to get into the casino, what are you going to do? You know, wear a hat, grow a beard, wear glasses, you know, like that, you know. So you're going to do everything you can uh, in the recognition phase. And even in the enrollment phase, you might not have a really good image to go on, or, you know, whatever you're trying to measure. So it's much harder in the identification problem because you probably have uncooperative subjects. Okay, so that's good again. I mean, we're focused, you know, on this uh, authentication problem. So we got cooperative subjects, you know. We've got fewer comparisons. We've got all the advantages here. <laughs> okay. 